Mayor Pro Tem, do we have a quorum? Yes, sir, we do. Having a quorum, I now declare this meeting open. Line, will you lead us in the case, please? Order 359 to go into this meeting for the city. Lord, we just asked you for, to bless the families that uh, have lost loved ones in the last week or so. Uh, the community and county has lost several people. Lord, we just asked you for this to look over the sick with the flu and watch over and give everybody help as soon as possible. Lord, we ask you to watch over this mayor and council as we move forward through this meeting and for the betterment of the city. Amen. Gentlemen, if you could I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, the agenda is in front of you. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as submitted. Someone? Second. A second. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Please note that it is unanimous. Council, I entertain a motion to appoint Brandon Douglas as our interim clerk until such time as we have a full-time clerk. So moved. That motion. Second. 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 Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Please report as unanimous. Council, you have in front of you the minutes from the June 6, 2020 regular meeting. I'd entertain a motion that we accept the minutes as given. So moved. Second. second. Motion to second. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. <laughs> Discussion of municipal court. Is there anyone in this audience who would like to come forward and speak on this? before we have our meeting. Council, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve for the mayor and city attorney to negotiate a contract between the city and Robert Sneed to serve as municipal court judge for 2020. Motion, a second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Please record as unanimous. Council, I need a motion to authorize Robert Sneed to act as interim municipal court judge on behalf of the city until the council formally approves his contract. So moved. Have a motion. I need a second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Please report as unanimous. Council, I need a motion to authorize the mayor and county attorney to negotiate a contract between the city and Joe Hudson to serve as prosecutor for the municipal court for 2020. So, the mayor, I'm the mayor, the city attorney. Yes. You say county. Just to clarify, city attorney. For the, no, city attorney. Between the city and Joe Hudson. Yes. So moved. We have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Please record as unanimous. Council, I need a motion to approve the mayor and city attorney to negotiate a contract between the city and Courtney Stewart to serve as public defender for our municipal court for 2020. So moved. As a motion. And a second. A second. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Please record as unanimous.
Council on a motion to authorize Joe Hudson to act as interim prosecutor on behalf of the city until the council formally approves his contract. Mm -hmm. There was a motion? Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Please record as unanimous. And council, this is my last one of these for a moment. I need a motion to authorize Courtney Stewart to act as public defender on behalf of the city until council formally approves her contract. In a second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Please record as unanimous. I need a new business. Discussion of council committees. I'm going to ask Brandon to come forward and tell us about uh, his idea of how we can do this more efficiently. Mayor, council, um, the uh, document in your packet is uh, what I'm proposing as a 2020-2021 uh, department co-chairs slash liaisons. Uh, in terms of conducting business at the staff level in concert with the elected body, uh, you all have utilized uh, committees in the past. Y'all do have some standing committees. Um, what I would like to do is get some buy-in uh, tonight um, in terms of the discussion for you all to serve as co-chairs on the police and fire, or public safety, however you want to uh, phrase it, streets and parks, um, administration, uh, development, and then water and wastewater. Ideally, what I would be asking is uh, you all as the elected body, uh, at times there are things that come up, um, such as a personnel policy or the retirement policy that we had uh, went through last year. Uh, Mayor Weaver had appointed Council Member Proctor and, and uh, Snavey on the committee to look at the retirement. What I'd like to do at the staff level is know that when we do have an initiative that uh, is forthcoming or it's in the works or there's been a directive from the council, then we've got this committee already established of the administration committee. So what happened is dealing with human resource matters, financial matters, um, which is obviously HR, the personnel, uh, finance, uh, customer service, city hall workings, kind of the admin is the catch-all type. Um, job descriptions, pay scales, uh, any pay studies, things that may or may not be germane for the 2020 or 2021, but <coughs> establishing this, I guess, uh, for my purposes would afford me the opportunity of knowing that if we've got a, um, uh, a zoning ordinance amendment that staff is proposing, uh, we could facilitate a discussion amongst the planning and zoning commission, a couple of members there, and or one or two of the uh, co-chairs from the development. Uh, same way with, we've got SPLOST coming up uh, July 1, 2020. Uh, we'll officially begin the 2020 SPLOST. We've got monies allocated for streets, stormwater, uh, public safety, parks. So there will be some uh, capital uh, <coughs> funds available at the end of 2020, in 2021, that as we look at projects, um, you know, it doesn't preclude the entire board or council, but I like to call them liaisons, but you know, I call them co-chairs because as the elected leaders, I want y'all to have the buy-in of saying, well, how about tweaking it or um, adding this or that, and uh, I can present this to the, the full council, uh, which is a practice that you all are accustomed to doing, um, but I just wanted to kind of put it on the forefront to say, you know, here are some places where you all could have some, some uh, input or buy-in. And... Um, 
I'm mirroring that of what we do for the Mayor Pro Tem of two cycles. So uh, Mr. Looney is 2020, 2021 Mayor Pro Tem. Um, so the liaisons will be 2020, 2021 as well. I believe we have a guest in the lobby. She was down there, there's something in the hallway. Sorry. She was walking around. And, and once again, this does not preclude anything uh, from the full council or the public. It's merely an opportunity to um, kind of get on the forefront of something that needs um, kind of the initial buy-in of, of the elected. So for clarifying, you, you're you looking at this for two years, like you could be chair for two, let's say co-chair of of police and fire for 2021, 2020 and 2021? Yes, sir. And then you could also have another co-chair for that particular period? Yes, sir. Okay, so. And, so. and we could we could uh, structure it any way you want. You could do it to where you have one roll off and one stay on. I mean, this is an opportunity for you all to kind of establish what you think would be a best practice um, in terms of saying, well, Let's stick it out for two years and let's reevaluate how we do the standing appointments. Um, I just, this initial stage, hearing that of Mayor Bruce. I'm curious to hear from council as to how they feel about being on there for two years instead of one row. Um, I think sometimes, though, being on one year, you get in the middle of trying to do some things and then you roll off and somebody else is on. And you're not always able to continue the path that you were doing. So, so feel like two gives you more I feel like two gives you a little more effective because you get in the position and you're able to do some things with a little bit more time. Plus, but, it works out good with the election cycle. That's true. It really does. Well, another thing that you, you could do the same thing by having one roll off and one step uh, each uh, each cycle. At, at the very least, I'd like to see one person stay on there for two years. I think for the work we have to do this year, um, to do a bunch of work and then run it off with people. And I think we ought to try to do it for two years and then maybe reevaluate in two years, but we may be in a better position to say, let's have them rolling off every other year or something yeah. like that. But right now, I, I agree with the work that needs to be done. So, clarification, Brandon, on, you're talking about an administration committee. Is that the one that we've already established, Ann and myself? Or? No, so what I'm looking at is this is uh, 2020, uh, the term this mayor, this council, so this is literally the blank, okay. blank slate. So we're starting over. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So if we went, as an example, starting here and going this way, and you pick one of these categories, and then everyone picks one, and then we get down to Jim, who we left to the last, <laughs> let him pick two, then we can turn around and come back. Just saying, as an example of how we could come up with and, uh, and not have it, uh, right. and then we'd all write it down as you choose. Unless y'all have a better idea. Yeah. Mr. Douglas, do you have any recommendations from your level of I will, you believe? I will tell y'all that, quite candidly, uh, each of these five, um, there are exciting things and opportunities for us to discuss. Um, and to, to the point earlier, 2020 may be a good opportunity for some of the, the legwork, the groundwork, the establishing things, and then the 2021 could then see some of the implementation of some of the planning. Um, and, and like I said, <clears throat> what I want to make sure that for the, the mayor and council and for the public, this does not preclude any particular issue that is ripe for decision to come before this council uh, for a full vote. It's just at times there are months of planning or going through a purchasing policy. And so what would happen is there would be the general direction of, okay, well, we need to establish a more robust purchasing policy. Therefore, here's a, a draft document that uh, management in concert with the co-chairs have drafted for the full council's buy-in and comments and then 
if it needs to be sent back to the committee for modifying or redoing, then that's kind of something that we've at least established the groundwork rather than me coming to you all just merely at a staff level with a document with no elected buying in, no policy making buying in, uh, and then um, establishing a, a committee and then the committee's coming through and saying, okay, well, why did you do it this way? And, and so it just kind of streamlines it. Um, I don't know if that helps or I don't want to put you off because mm -hmm. I know each of you all have your strong suits in terms of your own uh, professional um, your own profession uh, and or your own interests but candidly any number of these five um, I can tell you that uh, the next two years uh, we have a lot of opportunities to occupy your time and I'm just asking for some assistance in some of the policy guidelines. So let me ask one further thing I think that you and I had previously discussed was that that assuming that you have two members on any given committee that they would then on their own go back out to all of the other members and update them as to what was going on. So one of the things that we all talked about was having full transparency so that everyone knows everything. And this is how, I don't know a better way to do to achieve what we want. So I can tell you that uh, we do need to address the zoning ordinance. Uh, Mr. Siphon and I, along with Lonnie, have spoken at length about that. So if you're interested in serving on the development uh, committee, that would incorporate um, the zoning ordinance review. Um, admin uh, does deal with the finance and or the, um, the HR. So from a purchasing policy and a personnel policy. The personnel policy is the internal guiding document of how you do everything from job descriptions, job classifications, uh, pay scale, uh, even in so much as establishing uh, do we um, look at organizationally an opportunity for um, two positions of one clerk, one finance, or do we uh, do a combined? You know, how do we look at that? And then as we go through any sort of interviewing process, that particular council member or members would be kind of on my team of, of looking at uh, qualifications. Um, water, wastewater, obviously there's the need to evaluate the uh, uh, wastewater capacity and as we continue to look at our increase in uh, our uh, water, so how we move forward with, with that is, is huge. Uh, police fire, obviously it was huge in SPLOS to incorporate some sort of need and desire to have a police slash fire precinct along 515. Um, so we do have some capital monies coming uh, from SPLOS, which might be a 2021 20, uh, implementation. The 2021 obviously is a good opportunity to plan. Um, streets and parks, we've got sidewalks, stormwater issues. Uh, obviously there's a lot of interest in parks um, as we continue to enhance our existing inventory and continue to expand in other places. So Councilman Rafe, I, I just want to make sure it is very hard for me to, um, you know, all of these, I'd love for y'all to be in every single conversation, but some of the intimate details, I would have to defer to one or two periodically committee uh, and then come before the full council when it is ripe for a decision. Uh, so policy decision is what I would be seeking from this collective body. That answer? For the benefit of my council members, um, uh, and not that you don't know this, but also for the public, um, the success of a volunteer committee um, and we're sworn servants, uh, but to a great degree it's volunteer work that we're doing. Um, passion about what you're doing is is important to, to drive in the process, and uh, I think this affords uh, 
the opportunity of, of the elected to interact on us with the staff in a way that we've um, done only informally in the past. I think it could be a, potentially a powerful tool to get the little bit of work we have <laughs> to do. Uh, of course, I've been facetious, but uh, so I think it's I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So what's you want to, do? You want a motion on how to proceed with this, or I don't know that we actually need one. Of those. I feel, yeah. I would, what about I would uh, how about so. you just? Uh, I was just going to pencil in. You know, if if you wanted mayor to start off on, on one side and and someone can uh, kind of everybody satisfied with that? Just to let you get two dudes. You satisfied? But you last. I get the last. I get the first one and the last one. Um, well, based on my uh, Passion. Recent experience. Passion. And, uh, <laughs> passion. Uh, I would like to be on the development committee. Development. Okay. And again, I, I'm envisioning uh, planning, zoning, economic development, other other things. And this and this will freak some people out in the public world. <laughs> and that puts you in the 2020 and 2021. Yes, sir. On development. Okay. And. Uh, Mr. Bradley. I would be honored to serve for police and fire. Police and fire. Mr. Franks. Streets and bars. Streets and bars. Streets and bars. I am shocked. <laughs> so far, right? So, so far, a surprises, right? Okay. You see? I could do administration. 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 Yes. For me. Is it your turn? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. So you would like to have administration, and that puts you as a co-chair on that. And uh, you get one more, Jim. Police and fire. Police and fire. And you're coming back. Coming back. Streets and parks. Streets and parks. Now, Mr. Mayor, if I could just interject, I, I should have done this earlier, but I want to show favoritism. Uh, Mr. Hall is not in attendance tonight. I told him he did not have to be here. But he did specifically name a person, and I did not want to be remiss and, and recognize Mr. Faust for water wastewater for whatever it's worth. I don't want it to influence you on your last pick. <laughs> but, that was my pick. But I did want to make sure that I, I put that plug in for David um, and not do it uh, injustice. So. Okay. And uh, Councilman Raphael, you do not have another pick. I believe I'll serve on development. So, um, <laughs> clarify for me which uh, uh, committee Mr. Faust is serving on as coach here. Uh, he is serving on streets and parks. Streets and parks and, and water. 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 Wastewater. Wastewater or water? Same. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought maybe that last one was How would you like to serve on that? Well, we also have something. It's the only one left. Something. Do yeah. we add something? Uh, Probably right. Oh, uh, you know, yeah, Kurt, took, uh, we got as long as it's a I was trying to make this easy, folks. <laughs> okay, let's put Sonny in the left on, on the water, wastewater committee. That's an exciting committee. committee. Could spend the years. <laughs> Time for hour. Council, that was uh, an interesting process. Thank you for it. Participation there. Now, Brandon, I think 
that uh, we wanted to have a discussion about standing meetings as our next uh, yes sir. And what, what is your vision for standing meetings it is an opportunity to expound upon the already established uh, first Monday of each month regularly scheduled council meeting. Um, what I'd like to do in your packet is a, uh, a color coded 2020 calendar uh, along with the uh, 2020 uh, uh, Jasper Municipal Court for reference. So, what you'll notice is the color coded uh, first Monday is already illustrated in yellow, and with the exception of September 14th. Uh, they all pretty well fall on the first Monday, um, and then the, uh, there's been a desire to look at work sessions. Um, work sessions uh, can be where you're, in effect, almost helping to set your agenda. Uh, they can be working through some items that may come up from committee to a work session that staff thinks is right for a decision but yet going through a work session it could be revealed that some more work is needed so the work session it kind of serves that purpose um, in an ideal world uh, you can have some public hearings uh, set up on work session nights because at a public hearing you are not uh, making a decision uh, at times uh, you are sometimes just having a public hearing and you may defer a decision or discussion to uh, a regular. So if you've established a calendar whereupon you have standing meetings, uh, it gives staff, you all, and the general public, uh, and businesses, etc., an opportunity to know that there is a scheduled meeting of the mayor and council along with a work session. Uh, I've also incorporated proposed uh, planning and zoning. Uh, Mr. Waters, as our development manager, can attest to the fact that uh, we've not always been able to communicate to applicants uh, when the next meeting would be. So as we transition into next uh, Monday's special call meeting to talk about boards and commissions, uh, if you all would entertain this or we can discuss it, it gives even your volunteers an opportunity to know that on the fourth Tuesday of each month uh, we have a commitment to a meeting. That does not mean you're going to have it. You may not have a work session. You may not have a plan and zoning. If there are no items to present, you merely post an agenda that says that the meeting is canceled due to no items to present. And then you fulfill the uh, obligatory statute of advertising. Um, and lastly, I will tell you that I've put in there holidays um, in purple. Uh, we do have them on our website. Um, what I would like to bring up is one holiday that is not on our website that has not been proposed. Uh, but if it's something that y'all would like for us to pr pursue, we can, uh, is Good Friday. Um, this year it falls on the 10th of April. As a practice at times, um, City Hall would uh, periodically close after lunch on that day. Uh, <clears throat> I would prefer to have council authorize me to either A, we recognize that as a holiday, uh, consistent with the calendar or others, or uh, half a day, or if y'all would prefer, we can continue to stay open for that business day. I have experienced being off that day, I've experienced working that day. So I have no uh, professional preference. Uh, I will withhold my personal, but professionally I have no uh, preference professionally. Let me ask you one question. Is, uh, is the county closed, the county office is closed on that day? I believe so. Okay. So now do you need a Need, uh, that, that is where I would probably ask Mr. Siphon if we would want to formalize that through our regularly scheduled meeting on the 3rd of February. Okay. Recognizing that as a, an official holiday, if that's something that y'all want to entertain. We can do that. One other thing, uh, one other question. If we, if we um, 
approve this schedule, that does not necessarily set those dates in stone because you still have the option to move them as necessary. The, the mayor and elected body do have the ability to have special call meetings, um, but this is just something that if an applicant comes in, it gives <coughs> us the ability to say, well, that doesn't require a planning and zoning decision. It's for council to consider, but it may have some discussion, some lengthy discussion. We know we're going to have a work session on this date, so it gives that person the ability to schedule, and y'all can, can be here as well. Um, hey, Mayor, if I would, um, if y'all will go ahead and approve the calendar, that will allow Brandon as city manager and clerk to post for the entire year the meetings and that will help uh, us comply with the Open Meetings Act and I'm sure the media would appreciate knowing in advance what your meetings are. Um, before you vote though, I would note that the work session for November I think is falling on Thanksgiving and the work session for December is falling on Christmas Eve, so I thought y'all might want to... We, not, we noticed that also, and that's why I was asking if, uh, if we could have, even if we approved this, that, that we could have, that would allow you to move those off of those, uh, those holidays. And from time to time, I do want to make sure that y'all actually look at it, so it's very good. Thank you for, yeah. for that. That's You'd be proud of us. That's, that's and, and, and to that point, um, that is why for the discussion of this because I no way know what y'all's immediate thoughts are. This is very much open for, for y'all. This would be y'all's calendars of sorts. Mr. Siphon, the um, Open Records, uh, Open Meetings Act, what are the requirements on canceling or are there uh, time frames for canceling previously scheduled meetings? Uh, the Open Meeting Act is more concerned about you meeting, so it doesn't really set out in detail how you go about cancellation. I would recommend just from a, a courtesy viewpoint that, you know, as soon as you know you're not going to have a meeting for whatever reason, <coughs> at least 24 hours before the meeting, um, especially for the media that you know makes the effort to come to every meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they would appreciate knowing in advance. I don't, from a legal point of view, I don't have y'all, I don't have a problem with you sitting the first Monday and the last Thursday and then y'all can change it if you want to during the course of the year. Um, you'll always have to uh, have 24 hours notice to the media uh, as to that change in the and, uh, and do posting and uh, if you're adding a meeting if you're if you're moving yeah. well if you're moving in or adding the meeting uh, and, and usually if you give the media a 24 hour notice it's a non-issue um, you know they just want to be notified that you're going to have a meeting. Okay. Council, what's your pleasure? Do you want to? I would like to, <clears throat> I'd like to make the motion that we set the calendar, but with a couple changes. Have our November workshop on December the 3rd, and then our December workshop on December the 30th, and I recommend that we have a full holiday for Good Friday. I'd like to ask, what, do we know what it would cost us to do that and how many holidays they get now? Uh, I will tell you that when I've explored that, um, apparently the uh, floating holiday that you all had approved some years back, I think had the intent of giving the employee the ability to uh, take off um, for whatever day they want to recognize. So, I'm, I'm torn about the floating holiday to me as a, a personal day, part of, I'm not saying an entitlement, but it's a, a benefit for the employee. In terms of the exact cost uh, per day, 
uh, you've got the essential slash non-essential with public safety working in any way, uh, and then essentially you're having city hall staff uh, closed. Um, and Would it just be city hall staff or streets and and streets and uh, water wastewater. Once again, you've got a 24-hour operation that someone so. would. What that does is the people who are working that day already mm -hmm. as essential, it gives them the ability for the holiday day. So in terms of the exact cost, <laughs> I can get that. Um, but there are 12 holidays now. They're right. Or 11. I think so. 11 and a floating or mm -hmm. 12. Mm -hmm. I would... Uh, 12 is what the state has. I don't know about the county. Um, the county changes. I think, would, uh, I think nine. Or no, 11. Plus 12. Yeah, 12. Yeah. That's what I remember. I, I would uh, like to consider uh, doing away with the floating holiday. There is vacation time available for that. Uh, and, uh, and our employees do have significant vacation, most all of them. We have a motion with a second. Well, we, we're in mental discussion, and you're right. We probably should have had a motion, but no. we no. have a motion. Do we have a second? No, we did not have a second. We do not have a second because I just asked the question. I, I'll, I'll uh, uh, second it so that we can discuss it legally now. Okay. okay. Discussion. Continue. Yeah. I'm so the state has 12, if we do away with the floating and just make it on Good Friday, that still yeah. gives them the same amount of holidays, but yet they can. Yeah. Are you good? I mean. Um, is that covered there. in the motion? Hmm? Is that covered in the original motion? No. No. I mean, is this something that we need a little more information on? Not necessarily. Okay. I don't think since we're going to change the floating to that holiday instead of a floating holiday. And it's not going to really, my concern is if we added one, what it was going to do to the budget. Financial? Yeah. What would it do to uh, employee morale to take away one of their holidays? I would, I would, I would say that we're recognizing Good Friday as a holiday. You're not really taking You're one. Not taking You're not taking away. You're just telling them they're taking <laughs> It's, the floating holiday is no longer floating. Yeah, it's floating it's good, Friday. good Friday. But I, I will say for purposes of discussion, uh, if I may, Mr. Seifman can, can, this is part of what Mr. Looney had brought up and what Ms. Ann and I talked about too, is as you get into the personnel policy and as you look at accruals and leaves and holidays and other things, uh, that will need to be worked on. So we're going to still have continued conversations about things. So if you would prefer to hold off on that with the concern of the budgetary implications, we can extract that from this calendar uh, momentarily. I wanted to put this out there on a very one of the very first meetings in January as I committed to y'all, of beginning the discussion mm -hmm. so as to not make y'all feel like there had to be something set in stone. So if y'all wanted to approve the calendar, less that add-on that I put uh, to provoke discussion, then to Mr. Siphon's point, staff can go ahead and post this, and then as the committees work on different things, uh, we could then come before y'all with, hey, this is a schedule of our holidays. Uh, here are the implications if we add one or replace. Because in agreement with employee morale, I agree. I did want to provoke the discussion, though, while we're talking about the calendar. So to y'all's pleasure, how you want to proceed? I agree with that. I see these as two items, one being on the agenda, one not. I believe the approval of the calendar itself is completely separate. Wait on the holiday until due time. Okay. So at present, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Could I ask you to withdraw your motion and restate? I will withdraw my motion and restate 
that we approve the calendar with the work days for November to be moved to December the 3rd, the work day for January to be moved to December the 30th, and approve the calendar for those changes. And I will do we have second, a second? I will second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Please record the names. Now I'd like to make a motion that we discuss in um, maybe the workshop that we propose the new holidays or how we should address the flow. Address all of them, that's what you're saying? Put, put it on the agenda yes. for the uh, work session on the 27th. Yes. The work session on the uh, 27th, the 28th, is that the uh, 27th. 27th, okay. Yeah. So we have a motion on the floor to discuss what? On the 27th? The holidays. Discuss the holidays. The holidays. And that's it? Yes, sir. Okay. Put that on the agenda for the 27th. And uh, did I hear a second? Hopefully we did a motion for uh, probably some way to put it on the agenda. I'll ask you to put it on the agenda with draw the motion. With draw the motion? Would you please just put it on the agenda? Okay. <laughs> but that does one bring up one point that's not on our agenda tonight. Uh, and uh, I think we can discuss that next week. Um, I want to send each of you, I, I have the list that you have sent me of names for what we're going to be discussing next week, which will be committee assignments, and I will, I will email those to each of you. Uh, instead of compiling them, what I did was take your original list and then just strike through so that uh, you can readily see. And uh, also, uh, on some people who were put on the list, I'm not so certain that they were inside the city. So um, look at the list as I send it to you. I'll send that out tonight. And then what I would ask you to do is to go down your list and talk to our citizens and find out their response to survey. So what we're looking for is an entire pool of, uh, of citizens who will serve us on different committees. And if they speak about a specific one, make note. But you need to go out to your contacts and let's see if we can get them to serve by next week, if possible. So I will email that out so that everyone can see everyone else's name. So just for clarification, um, the, there are some of those uh, appointments that people can live outside the city, particularly the one of the authorities. One of the Correct. Right. So there are enough names on there that are already outside that we don't have to look for any more. Okay. Yeah, so let's talk to the uh, let's gotcha. talk to the ones that that you think that are inside. We have plenty on the outside, but we need to fill the uh, the ones that live inside the city. Okay. Okay? Any questions? Council, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So, Mayor, before you do that, I do like to ask a question, if you don't mind, before you adjourn. Uh, just the press knows I am the city court judge. Uh, Council, do you have any objection to listening to this? No. I did ask up front. I will draw my motion. No, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I am scheduled Please to proceed. May I continue? Please proceed. I'm, I am scheduled to sit as city court judge next Tuesday. Do I understand for planning that you have terminated me as the court judge tonight? I don't know about the word termination and whether that's inappropriate. Would you would you speak to that question of termination? It wasn't a termination. It was a decision by the council not to renew your services for another term. Um, I did not hear a stated cause. Can you tell me what the cause was? In that you don't have a current stated term, you're an at-will, uh, I guess, service provider, and the council doesn't have to have calls to uh, end the relationship since you're an at-will service provider. Thank you for the clarification. I'm sorry I don't have enough for all the council. I think I may be one copy short. <clears throat> Thank you, folks. 
Would anyone further like to come forward? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so.